it's coming. It's nearly here. Elden Ring, the DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree. It is not far away at all. It seems all but guaranteed that it will come out in the first half of 2024. It even seems it might be in the first quarter, February, March. There's a lot pointing towards that. I believe there was some From Software financial reports that did come out that did suggest they will release this DLC maybe in Feb, maybe in March. That would be around the two-year anniversary of Elden Ring's release, so it would line up quite nicely, and enough time will have passed that would suggest it is a substantial DLC. We're not just getting a, a legacy dungeon, maybe a, a tiny landmass to explore. It's going to be something really big. In fact, there are three pretty major pieces of information that have come out today relating to Shadow of the Erd Tree and from software in general. And starting off, there are heavy rumours, pretty reliable rumours, about the size of Shadow of the Erd Tree. Fighting Cowboy is a content creator for From Software. Elden Ring covers a lot of other games, Let's Plays, Guides. So it is someone fairly substantial in the community. It's not just a random Twitter post or something. And this person has come out and said, I fully expect Shadow to be massive, basically half the size of Elden Ring. I expect it to overshadow major releases despite just being a DLC. This is something we probably could have expected, given it's been in development for so long. It's been two plus years from have released another game in that time, that wait between the Elden Ring release and this DLC in Armored Core 6, which did pretty well, it seems. It sold millions of copies, but we still wait for this DLC, so it seems like there's going to be a fair bit in there. If we think about the DLC from have released, it usually is pretty chunky. If you look at something like Bloodborne's Old Hunters, you look at Dark Souls 3, there was a smaller DLC, but the Ring City was pretty substantial. I probably spent 15, 20 hours in there. I'm sure Min Max has spent way more time in. You can throw in a lot of hours. There's a lot of bosses in there. Some of them are usually quite challenging. I'd expect it to be the case with Elden Ring's DLC. And there was also outside of the Twitter posts that this content creator put out, there was also a live stream. And another Souls YouTuber did reply to a question saying, if you are expecting 25 hours, a 25 hour long adventure, then the DLC will probably meet your expectations and then some. So it is sounding like it may be the length of a lot of full games. You're probably going to be getting 30 plus hours here and depending on say the replay value, there could be a fair bit of content. I would be expecting it's going to be a genuine landmass. It's not just going to be, say, a dungeon thrown in somewhere and, and you just explore it like a Dark Souls level. I imagine that we will be getting another chunk of that open world. And what I'm really hoping with it is they do focus on quality over quantity. I hope it's just not 100% more of the same because Elden Ring is absolutely fantastic one of the best games, if not From Software's best ever games. But I do think that sometimes the little dungeons that you find are not always quality in the same way, say, a Dark Souls 1, at least up until Anna Londo. Pretty much everything is, is absolutely fantastic. So I hope that there's a smaller number of dungeons, but they're more substantial. And what I'm really hoping for is a bit of a mix there, because one of my favourite things in Elden Ring is when you go into the underground and you found that lake, for instance. My memory's a little bit hazy, I haven't played it since 2022 when it came out, but I just remember that feeling of going down to that lake and thinking, this isn't just going to be one of those little catacomb dungeons where there's a, a boss at the end that resembles a normal enemy. This is a genuine area that I've discovered, and I'm going to be here for a while, and I was. So I hope that we do get those feelings where not every dungeon is the same length. You do find ones that are, are fairly large, way more substantial than you thought. And then you throw some smaller ones in there as well, so it's not predictable. I hope they do something like that with the open world, keep the mystery there. Make sure it's challenging, make sure the exploration is really rewarding. I don't think they'll let us down. I think they would have taken a lot of the learnings of Elden Ring and... Since that came out, we've had other titles like Tears of the Kingdom, which has been good. That expanded on the Breath of the Wild formula, and I think it's safe to say that Elden Ring was influenced by the Zelda series in that regard with Breath of the Wild. So I'm confident that it's going to be 25 plus 
really quality hours. I'm sure it will be one of the major releases of 2024 when we think about Game of the Year. Even though it's a DLC, it will probably be in the conversation somewhere because they just don't seem to let us down. Armored Core 6, really good. Something like Sekiro, fantastic. Even their smaller scale games are really good. So given this is going to be probably their juggernaut for 2024, I think they're going to do a good job. And adding to the credibility... This YouTuber, apparently they also confirmed long ago that Armored Core 6 was coming before the Elden Ring expansion during a live stream. And at that time, nobody really believed them because previously, From had never released a major game before wrapping up DLC on a previous game, like say DLC for Dark Souls 3 or Dark Souls 2. Makes sense. I can see why people were skeptical because the hype's still there for their most recent game. That should be the time you would think to release DLC. But From Software bucked the trend. They released Armored Core 6. They didn't wait for the Elden Ring DLC to come out. And I don't think it's going to matter. I think what Armored Core 6 did is it reminded people how great From Software are, and they will be absolutely looking forward to the Elden Ring DLC no matter what. I actually think because it's been so long since Elden Ring, that because the dust has settled, people are ready, they want more, and it may even have as much hype, just about as much hype as the original release, because word of mouth has now gone everywhere. I think there's been a huge resurgence of even some of the mainstream looking forward to quality single-player games. Baldur's Gate 3 contributed to it, and that is going to come to a head when we get Shadow of the Erd Tree. I think it's going to be massive. I mentioned some other pieces of information. They aren't quite as big as this, but for instance, there is a rumor about From Software making a PS5 exclusive title. I'm not excited by that, the fact that it could be PS5 exclusive. I'm sure even if it was real, it'll come out on PC eventually as well, but I'm not a fan. From Software, over the years, since their terrible original release of Dark Souls 1 on PC, I think they have made massive ground with the PC community. Fans on PC play their games and love them despite some of those older ports, not because of them. But Armored Core 6 ran extremely well on PC, so it seems like From get it, and they're going to do right by their PC community going forward, you would hope. But releasing a PS5 exclusive, that might get people down slightly. It could be a Bloodborne 2, it could be something else, we'll have to see. Now, of course, this is just a rumor. It's come from Reset Era, and I'm not even going to click on the link because I'm sick of that website. If you know it, you'll probably get what I mean. The leak was very much to the point. It was simply from software and making a PS5 exclusive. Is it real? I kind of hope it isn't, but we'll see. This person is apparently a leaker who's leaked other stuff. I don't think it's totally random, so we will have to see. There was also talk about a Bloodborne movie, though. So a big video game adaption, Bloodborne by Sony Pictures. Now, this is almost satire at this point, because how many times do we get a rumor about a Bloodborne PC port, or at least a, a PS5 remaster or something like that? It's why I don't like to talk about rumors like this too much, because we've been let down before by anything related to Bloodborne. But honestly, if there was anything I would believe, it's that Sony are doing anything except a re-release of Bloodborne. Absolutely anything except. They're even doing a movie before they port this game on modern devices, port it on PC. The writer? I looked him up and he's responsible for superhero movies like Shazam. Doesn't have a, a whole lot of experience, it looks like, in that sort of gothic, maybe horrorish setting. There is a logline from the person who leaked it, mentioning it's a Sony project based on the PlayStation game of the same name. Bloodborne follows the player's character, Hunter, through the decrepit, gothic, Victorian-era-inspired city of Yarnum, whose inhabitants are afflicted with a Bloodborne disease, which transforms the residents called Yarnumites into horrific beasts. Attempting to find the source of the plague, the player's character unravels the city's mysteries while fighting beasts and cosmic beings. And someone asked, is it TV or movie? And the person responded, movie. Daniel Richman, who I believe is the leaker, seems to do this a lot in the movie and TV space. So again, not just a random person posting something and saying, hey guys, my uncle works at Sony, works at Nintendo, this is definitely real. It seems like it could have some credibility Again, just the fact that this is a Bloodborne-related piece of news that isn't a modern port, I think it could be possible, because it would just disappoint everyone, basically. Sure, this could be cool if they get it right, 
but I think people would be a little bit salty that we still haven't gotten a way to play this in 2023. That is convenient. I just want to play it on my PC. Please, I don't even care if it's the laziest port ever. It's 30 FPS. I would probably still play it because it's been so long since I've been able to get around to that title and I loved it when I came out. I bought a PS4 specifically for it. I wasn't disappointed. I want to play it again. We'll see if it's real. I see it as a bit of fun for now, but I hope that Sony aren't holding on to a Bloodborne PC port, PS5 port, until the movie's ready and they want to release them around the same time so they can really generate excitement, capitalize on sales. If you've got that port, Sony, just release it. I will buy multiple copies. I'll give them away to friends because I just want to see that series continue. I thought it was really, really fun and From just don't seem to let us down. All this stuff about Bloodborne movies, a PS5 exclusive, that to me is all a bit of fun. What's really critical for me is the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. It sounds like we're going to be getting the next slice of a really, really substantial From title within the next few months before the end of March. I can't wait for it. Can't wait to jump into it. I hope we get that announcement at the Game Awards in December. That's where it sounds like it will happen. They announced, I believe... Armored Core 6 at the last show, and I do think that even though Shadow of the Earth Tree is not a new game, it is big enough to warrant a presence at the end of that show. Make that big announcement, get us excited, I can't wait to jump into it. So, thanks so much for listening, I'll see you on the next one, cheers, bye!